Claudette Crisco looks like a typical grandmother eager to share her family pictures. But after all these years, she's only now telling the real story behind them, or at least what the CIA has approved. At that time, it was a cold war with Russia. And they were being trained in Germany. Hers is a story that began nearly 60 years ago with a handsome man in uniform. And he came over and asked me to dance. A tapestry of love and war. Danger didn't mean a heck of a lot to him. Woven through the threads of green berets that ultimately became tangled in a web of spy tales. He knew he was working for the CIA. Absolutely. From Korea to the Cold War in Vietnam, Claudette experienced it as the wife of an American hero who paid the ultimate sacrifice. A man whose secret life she's fought to reveal so that he might get the recognition he deserves. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, that's not right. It just isn't right. Claudette knew that for her husband to be recognized at the National Vietnam Memorial, she'd have to reveal secrets she's been keeping for 44 years, her husband's true story. Bob Crisco was born in the 1930s in Peabody, Massachusetts, one of 10 kids he made an early name for himself by stealing his brothers. At 15, Crisco used his brother's ID to enlist in the army. And by the time most American boys were driving, Crisco was jumping out of planes as a paratrooper. He was an army ranger in Korea, where he earned two bronze stars, one for rescuing wounded comrades under enemy fire, the other for destroying a machine gun nest with hand grenades. And then he earned a soldier's medal. The expert swimmer rescued a drowning officer who got tangled in a parachute. Bob jumped in the water and swam to him and kept him his head above the water. Crisco returned from Korea a hero, and that's when his life took two dramatic turns. The first was when he met Claudette. I was out to dinner with my mother. And they, there was music there, and he, he had just, just come home a couple of days before. And he came over and asked me to dance. The two fell in love and got married. Right about the same time, he joined a new group of elite rangers. Crisco was an original member of the Green Berets, and his original beret still hangs in Claudette's home. They were all volunteers, and they had to be paratroopers at that point. And they hid us away in the mountains in Austria because it was kind of a, they didn't want too many people to know that they were forming this, this group of men. Bob and Claudette came back from Europe with lots of stories and a son. Hugh idolized his dad, now a highly decorated officer, called upon for top secret missions. The phone rings, and it's Bob. Claude, yeah, I can't talk long. I just want you to know that I'm, everything's fine, but you won't hear from me for a few days. And that, that was it. He hung up. Little did she know, he was on standby to invade Cuba. It was 1962, the ultimate showdown with Russia, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And later, he was sent to Vietnam the first time. He loved the people. The little children, that's all he talked about was the little children. They were so beautiful. It was 1964, and the Green Berets were sent in to train and ingratiate themselves with villagers they hoped would help Americans. But danger lurked. Crisco stumbled on it and earned a Purple Heart when he stepped on a primitive booby trap, a stake laced with poison. After his tour, Crisco left the military, but he'd returned to Vietnam three years later, only this time as a covert operative on a deadly mission. Then he went to work for the CIA. How did that come about? I don't know whether they contacted him or, they, or he contacted them. It's hard to know because at that time, things were, um, you didn't talk about certain things. It was 1967 and America was fully involved in Vietnam. Crisco was working for the CIA, but what exactly he was doing there is still a mystery, and so is his death. Just five months after he got there, the expert swimmer who once saved a drowning commander just drowned. Claudette was at work when two strangers broke the news. They were from the CIA. One of the gentlemen's name was Mr. Brown. Now, whether that was his name, who knows? She didn't ask, but she did have questions. In fact, she demanded to see her husband's body to make sure it was him. And as for his drowning, it still puzzles her. What can you say? You know, and at that time, everything was so hush-hush. Crisco had a full military burial at Arlington National Cemetery. Among the mourners, 
Green Berets who formed his honor guard, and ghosts from Crisco's past. CIA colleagues Claudette had been told were dead. All of a sudden, this gentleman came up to me and gave me a big hug and said how sorry he was. And I looked up at him and I said, my God, I thought you were dead. And he disappeared the same way as he came in. Widowed at 35, Claudette kept her husband's memory alive in stories she told their son. But one thing she had a hard time explaining years later, why Robert Crisco was not recognized at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. After all, he'd earned a Purple Heart in Vietnam and later died there serving his country. But because he was a civilian at the time, he didn't fit the criteria. And his name couldn't go on the wall? Just didn't, just, it just didn't seem right. So years ago, she started contacting lawmakers for help, even the White House and the CIA, which at first was skeptical. How did she know he really worked for them? That's when she pulled out these, letters on CIA letterhead, a rare sight itself, sent to her from the very top. Dear Mrs. Crisco, may I extend to you my deepest sympathy in the sudden loss of your husband? Not one, but several directors had written to her about her husband's sacrifice. He will long be affectionately remembered by his colleagues in this organization. Our thoughts are with you sincerely, Richard Helm. They wanted her to know he mattered, and that's what she wanted at the wall. Acknowledgement. Claudette kept up the pressure, and 14 years later, just last month, it paid off. Robert Crisco. My husband died 43 years ago in Vietnam. At the Vietnam Memorial, Claudette Crisco proudly added her husband's name to something that was created for people like Crisco, the In Memory Honor Roll. My grandfather, Thomas Cappuccini, best friend I could ever ask for. My husband, Captain Richard. Jerry Lynn. My father, Jeffrey Dwayne Gardner. Here echoed the names of Americans whose deaths have now been linked to the war. Robert Crisco's name will not be etched on the wall, but it will be read aloud in a roll call every year at the memorial and his picture and mementos will be kept in a special memory box on the grounds. For Claudette, it was closure the widow who never remarried, never realized she needed. This is a long time coming though for you. 14 years, I started in 1996, long time. Robert Crisco left behind an only son, and Hugh Crisco, all grown up, brought his only son to the memorial. Someday he'll tell him more about his grandparents, the man on the secret fatal mission and the wife who revealed it to keep his memory alive. Karen Swenson, NECN.